Anybody got an answer yet? Yeah? 4.34, how about, there's kind of approximately, how about 4 megajoules? Anybody get anything different? 4.3, fine, fine. So <clears throat> the energy, one half, if I treat it like a disk, we have a moment of inertia of one half mR squared. Uh, I should make that a big R. And omega, now, we're given revolutions per minute, so that means I have to convert Let's see, 20 pounds is close enough to 10 kilograms. I'm supposed to divide by 2.2, so it should be more like nine, all right, fine, be that way. Nine kilograms, radius 24 centimeters, so 0.24 meters squared. That's the moment of inertia, and omega is two pi times 55,000, that's revolutions per minute. So 2 pi times the number of revolutions is the number of radians. But this is per minute. So I need to divide by 60 seconds per minute. And square. And that does indeed work out to 4.3 megajoules. Is that a lot of is that a lot of energy? Does that seem like a lot? Maybe. Let's see what happens when a part fails and you're spinning this fast. So. This was an ultracentrifuge failure at Cornell University in 1998. And the half-inch thick sliding steel door on the top of the unit buckled when it was smacked, allowing fragments, including the steel rotor top, to escape. Fragments ruined a nearby refrigerator and an ultra-cold freezer, in addition to making holes in the walls and ceiling. The unit itself was propelled sideways and damaged cabinets and shelving, and a shock wave from the accident shattered all four windows in the room. The shock wave also destroyed the control system for an incubator and took an interior wall, I shook an interior wall, calling shelving on the wall to collapse. So I'm going to say that's a yes. Uh, so we can store a fair amount of energy in rotation, and, and that means we have to design things pretty carefully so that they can stand it. Okay?